Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, gorgeous souls, and welcome back to the Manifestation Babe podcast. Okay, you guys asked, so you got it. Brandon and I decided to talk about the topic that we left out of our last episode that we recorded together, which was all about the topic of sex. So for some reason, in my head, when we were recording the last episode, I thought this topic would be something like really short that we just talk about, you know, as people who have been spending 24 seven together for the last three years, we wanted to offer some of our tips and some of our insights into how we keep the spice alive while spending so much time together, when it's so easy for us to get sick of one another and take each other for granted, and then never really have that passion and polarity that most couples have, whether it's in the beginning of their relationship or couples who do spend certain hours apart every single day, or maybe a couple days a week apart, depending on each couple's um, scenario. And so instead, what this ended up becoming was like an hour, 15 minute episode. But I promise you guys, if you stick with us, the stuff that we share in this episode is so juicy. First of all, we are being super open, super transparent. Yeah, we go to places that I never imagined sharing on a podcast before. So we're being super open and transparent with you guys, but also we are sharing some content that we have learned from other relationship experts that has taken our relationship to the next level. We talk a lot about the feminine and the masculine and what each energy really needs to be happy. We talk about accelerators versus breaks in the bedroom and what that means and what that looks like, as well as we talk about orgasmic manifestation in this episode as well. And there's a lot of incredible insights that my husband Brennan offers, as well as I from each different perspective. So we thought it would be very interesting not just to hear a solo episode from me, but also bring in a masculine perspective so you guys both have both energies to speak on this topic. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive in to today's episode. Yo, 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 it's K&B in the house. What's up, Brennan? Hey, how's it going? Can you guys tell that quarantine is getting to our heads? I think we're on day 12. How are you doing over there, babe? I'm breathing. I'm walking. I'm eating. It sounds like pretty solid quarantine. Okay. So based on this topic that we're going to talk today, I know it sounds like we're out of breath and I don't want your guys' minds to go where you think it's going to go. We do this fun warm up activity before we start recording anything. And anytime I even myself start recording anything, it's like this warm up that we do. And it literally feels like a workout for 14 reps. And it just lifts up our vibration, but also completely takes our breath away. So if we're breathing heavy, don't allow your mind to go into the gutter because it's, it's, that's not it. Okay. It's not the gutter. It's (laughs) so this episode is about sex. We got lots of great feedback on our last episode and all of you guys wanted to hear more about the topic that we left out of the last episode, because otherwise it would have been just way too long. And what we did instead is we expanded on this topic and put it into a separate episode. So let's talk about sex, baby. I feel like we're going to sing that this entire episode. That's like the theme of this. So 
We have been together for the last three years, spending 24 seven. And we wanted to talk about, you know, we could talk about this in the general sense, but like really what inspired this topic is the fact that there are couples out there right now who are for the very first time spending 24 seven together. And Brennan and I have experience in this. It's been the last three years. People ask us all the time, like how we do it. And if we literally are together 24 seven. And what I want to say is that with this quarantine, it's a little bit different because Brennan and I have created schedules for ourselves, even though we do spend a lot of time together and we do live together and, you know, we spend just a lot of time together. But what we have developed over time is that we have created our own schedules to where sometimes we actually won't see each other for most of the day. And that's worked out beautifully for us because we love that feeling of like coming home to each other or like seeing each other after eight hours apart. Um, you know, like most couples who do work jobs and or maybe one of the two works a job and then that person comes home and it's like exciting. It's exciting to see them. It's exciting to catch up with them. So we created like that artificial environment for ourselves where you go to the gym, I go to the grocery store, like we find the different things that we can do. However, now it's like it's even more different because I believe we spend like an hour technically apart when you go out on a jog. Would you say that? I would say that that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And for and for a lot of you, you know, um, quarantine is quarantine. This whole you know worldwide situation that's that's you know developing before our eyes is probably the first time, maybe in a long time, that you've spent either in as much proximity to your partner as this or yourself. Because oftentimes when you're at the office or you're at the gym, like even if even if you don't live with someone or you're not dating someone right now or not seeing someone, like there's always outlets for yourself, right? And this may be the first time that you're really just, it's just you, um, which is kind of a partnership in and of itself. Um, but, you know, for the couples that also have kids or, you know, it's very different when you go from basically being out of the door by 7, 8, 9 a.m. and coming home at 5 or 6 or 7 p.m. to all of a sudden needing to coexist in the same environment. So I would say for Catherine and I, it's, it's been different. But we also what spurred this is we wanted to offer value and assistance to all of you guys who might be pulling your hair out a little bit at this stage yeah. of quarantine. I would say proximity is awesome because you do have that time together, but it's also on the other hand can often lead you to take each other for granted. And I think that when you spend a lot of time together, you kind of expect that person to be there. And when you keep expecting that person to be there, something like intimacy and sex just gets put on the back burner because you're like, oh, we can always do that, right? That's always an option for us. And I find that it, at some at sometimes in our relationships, my mindset has gotten to that place where I'm just kind of like, oh, Brennan's always going to be here. It's fine. It's whatever. And I don't necessarily prioritize our intimacy together and our bedroom time together, and especially that quality time together that inspires those kinds of acts. The beauty of the best relationships are that they are formed from deep friendships and deep partnerships. But what comes from that is it's called the friend zone for a reason. If you become too friendly with someone, that can benefit so many and augment so many parts of your relationship. But that familiarity, that safety of a friendship and a partnership can also kind of erode some of the action steps that it takes to create intimacy, to, to create spice, to create desire. Intimacy is kind of the act. Desire is kind of the precursor in the way I think about it is like, am I creating an environment with my partner where... I desire to be around them and they desire to be around me and we both know it. And not that that has to exist 24 seven. I mean, you're not 16 years old anymore. Well, maybe you are, but you know, <laughs> it's as we grow and mature, different things matter to us, right? So we have different responsibilities. We have different priorities for Catherine and I, there's a lot of boundaries about business because 
business in our life is part of our mm. life. It's not business. It's our mission. It's our purpose. So 24 seven is like, how can we serve? How yeah. can manifestation babe show up? And some, that's such a blessing, such a gift, but it can get in the way. I would, that's such a great point because one of our struggles in our marriages has been like, how do we separate the hats, all the different hats that we wear, like not only, and this is such a key point, like guys, not only are we married and live together 24 seven, we also work together and not just work together. On top of that, it's sharing a business and all of those responsibilities. And it's so easy to allow work to get in the way of life and life to get in the way of work. And like, how do you separate that? And how do you, how do you kind of resist that comfort level around just being roommates, right? Or right. just being friends. Like how do you bring that passion into the relationship and how do you fire up intimacy and keep it spicy where you are almost like the way I see it is it's like you are convincing your brain that you are you do have that separation even though that you don't. And a lot of like what for us, for instance, a lot of um, the things that have helped us personally were going to events like this incredible relationship trip that we went to in October, where Tony Robbins really expanded on. And if you guys are familiar with Date with Destiny, you'll remember from that event that he does. And if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch the Netflix documentary, I Am Your Guru. I am not your guru. Oh, I am not. <laughs> That's so funny. I am not your guru. Um, <laughs> that's a key distinction right there. I am not your guru on Netflix. And it's by Tony Robbins. And it's like an inside look into what's going on in the event. And you can get some pieces and, and exercises and see those things that the people are working on and the interventions that are there. It's a really, really great intro. Can I give some backstory on that really fast? Sure. Is that okay? Sure. I just want to say, guys, before I watched this documentary, I literally verbatim said to Catherine that Tony Robbins is an asshole, that Tony Robbins is not someone that you should listen to and might be kind of like, you know, a skeezy salesperson. Um, those of you who know me now recognize that I am probably his number one fan. You even look like through, him. You act like him. Well, you dress like him. <laughs> Wow. Wow. We're really getting savage in the MB podcast joint today. Okay. I see how it is. It's a compliment, Brennan. <laughs> so um, I, I just want to say that because I watched that documentary and it literally changed my life. Uh, it, it opened me to a different way of thinking. It opened me to going to UPW. UPW and yeah. now I have been a two-time platinum partner with Tony Robbins. Um, so I mean, I just, the financial stuff that we're into right now and is all the knowledge that because, we have is because of the people. It's not just Tony, you guys. Remember that Tony is not the Tony show. He brings a lot of experts into his events. Like the relationship trip wasn't just Tony Robbins talking about his relationship and how to be in a relationship and how to have spice in a relationship because that's just one person's perspective, right? And Tony is an expert at a lot of things, but he brings in like sex experts and um, relationship experts and femininity experts and experts in like that masculine versus feminine energy and you know how to appreciate the other sex and like all of these incredible people that were sharing their knowledge and gifts with us which is which is so awesome and we went to date with destiny together and date with destiny was such an impactful event for us i mean so much good has come out of it you have no idea so much so many amazing things so at Date with Destiny on day three of the event is called the Relationship Day, which is freaking awesome. And something we're going to share with you guys around like what fires up intimacy versus what shuts it down and talking about the different needs of a masculine and the different needs of the feminine. And again, I want to reiterate that masculine and feminine does not relate to gender. It relates to the core energy that you most resonate with. So you could be a masculine, like true masculine woman who was born as a masculine energy. And you could be a feminine man who was born as a, as a feminine energy in, in male form. And and that goes with like transgender. It's whichever energy that you most resonate with. And it's even deeper than that in that we all have both energies within us. And in different situations, different proportions come out differently. So I'm a very masculine man. I'm also a very feminine energy, too, that comes out in different situations. It doesn't mean I'm any less of a man. It just simply means that under certain contexts, my proportions of how I carry my energy are different. 
So yeah, it's just it's, a helpful framework in understanding how you react cer- to certain things, how you behave in certain ways. It's incredibly impactful. And I can tell you right now in our relationship, understanding the needs of the masculine, the needs of the feminine have changed the yes. ball game and this, for us. This is just something that we learned from that day three of the event. And as Brennan was saying, it's a yin yang or yin yang. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. I hear it both ways. But when you look at a, I'm going to call it yin yang. When you look at a yin yang symbol, you can see that though there is a side of it that's white and the side of it that's black, within the white, there's a black circle. And within the black, there's a white circle. And it shows that within femininity, if within the feminine energy, within the yin, there's also a bit of yang. And within the yang, there's also a bit of, of yin. So when we talk about what we're about to talk about, I want to make sure you guys um, really tune into your core energy, like who you believe you were at birth. I I know for a fact that I am a feminine woman. And um, though I have a lot of masculinity in me, and I've had to kind of let go of a lot of that masculinity that has developed through survival in my life. And um, Brennan has given me such a safe space to be able to explore that because he holds my energy so beautifully because he's so masculine. And so, you know, and Brennan, I know for a fact, is a very, very masculine man. So when we talk about this, just make sure you don't you don't go with what society is labeling you as or what society tells you you should be, but you go with what resonates with you most. Or what you're self-labeling as, because Catherine's saying things like Brennan's a very masculine man, but that doesn't mean Brennan's more of a man than anyone else. All it's saying is that in my energy field, in my in my aura, I carry a lot of masculine energy but I also carry feminine energy too. And so, you know, there's this balance. It's not about, oh, you're a masculine woman. That means you're not enough of a woman. This is not a conversation about enough. You are enough just the way that you are. This is simply a conversation about how can you, by understanding which energy you're leading with, can you find ways to bring out more of what you want? Exactly. So that was day three of the event. And then we went to the relationship trip. That was 10 days now of expanding on day three of Date with Destiny. So what we have learned has been so impactful for a relationship. And we just kind of want to give you guys those gifts of what has made the difference for us and then give you guys some of our own personal examples and personal tips without going way out there in left field, just really just sharing with you guys every little detail, because I'm sure you'd want us to spare that for you. But we will we will get as open and transparent and vulnerable with you guys as possible. So let's so begin talk, talk about sex, baby. Yeah. Okay. So (laughs) what fires up intimacy versus what shuts it down? So this actually comes from Alison Armstrong. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. She's amazing. She is amazing. And she um, actually taught Tony this. So even though we learned it from Tony, we know that it comes from Alison Armstrong. And also she was one of the speakers at the relationship trip. She taught like two entire nights for us. She has so much wisdom, so many incredible like things that could just take your relationship to the next level. So if you really want to dive deep into this work, she's definitely someone for that, I would say, emotional aspect. And there are other experts um, that we we were being presented by, which is um, experts in femininity, experts in sex, and all that other stuff. I'm sure that, um, excuse the alliteration, but I'm sure that many of you are aware of Brene Brown's brilliance. Um, But what Brene Brown is to shame and is is what Alison Armstrong is to relationships and sex. I mean, the brilliance of both of them um, are very equal in my eyes. but uh, Alison Armstrong, for your man, for you, is in, is an incredible. So we're, we're excited to share all the pieces about this that we've learned. Okay, now that we gave you guys a 45-minute introduction to what we actually want to talk about, <laughs> Brennan and I are both long-winded people, and it doesn't always work out in our favor being together. Like, we could just talk your ear off. Okay, three needs of the mask. <laughs> Let's dive into this. And number one is admiration. Admiration meaning, like, And this is just a small example. Like, wow, you are so incredible, Brennan. Like, you are so amazing. It's like I'm speaking to you as a man and who you are within your identity. 
Then the second thing that the masculine always needs is praise. And by praise, that's behavioral. The way I look at it is behavioral praise. So like, Brennan, you did such an amazing job making my coffee this morning, or I don't drink coffee anymore, my mushroom coffee. Um, Brennan, the way that you cleaned, the way that you made our bed today really meant a lot to me. Just like praising all of the things that he did well. And then the third thing is sex. So the masculine needs admiration, praise, and sex. And what the feminine needs is presence to be understood and to be safe. And so presence translates into undivided attention. And to be understood really means to be seen and to be heard. Like like the, the masculine is sitting there and gathering enough data and asking enough questions to really make the feminine feel that she is 100% understood, she is seen, and she is heard. And it's not just the masculine listening to her enough to just gather enough data to then bring the conversation back at her, but rather listening to what she actually has to say. And then the third thing is to be safe. And that comes into to be um, to be trusting of masculine, right? So again, three needs of the masculine: admiration, praise, and sex. Three needs of the feminine is present to be understood and to be safe. And quite frankly, guys, this is um, this is not what we're telling you is true about the world. Um, what this is is a framework that's worked for us. So if you're looking to get more out of your relationship, um, it's not that all I need as a man in the world are admiration, praise, and sex, and that all Catherine needs is presence to be understood and to be safe. In our relationship, bringing up our awareness of these things has changed the the nature, the dynamic level of our relationship a hundredfold. Um, and uh, I'd love to talk about presence later on too. <laughs> yes. So do you want to just dive into like the three things that shut down the masculine? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's actually interesting because a lot of these are kind of the inverse. So what the masculine needs is admiration. Wow, you're so incredible. You're a great human. I'm so proud of you. You're amazing. Praise. Wow, you did such a great job doing that. You you know, I'm, you really I'm so I'm so grateful for the, the way that you did this for me and, and sex. Um, ironically, the three things that shut down the masculine are being criticized that's essentially the opposite of admiration and praise, right? So being criticized, um, feeling closed off is a big one. You hear, you know, men talk about um, people, you know, she's stiff or she's cold. Um, that's really picking up on a feeling of being closed off um, from the feminine. Um, and the third thing is feeling controlled. And I can talk circles around this um, in our relationship as Catherine will go to bed in Las Vegas at 9 p.m. And I will be gambling until two in the morning. Um, and uh, the the level of trust and respect that has been curated in our relationship. Because Catherine gives me the freedom to be who I am in this world, she owns my soul. She owns my spirit. She owns my soul. I am unbelievably committed to Catherine as my partner in life, but it's because she never challenges my freedom. She really allows me to have my own freedom, my own space. So um, those are the three things that really shut down the masculine is feeling criticized, being closed off and feeling controlled. Those three will turn your man into a very resentful oaf. And that's not going to lead to more sex, let me tell you. No, no. And the three things that shut down the feminine, on the other hand, is feeling unseen, feeling that she's not understood, and feeling unsafe or like she can't trust. And the fixes or kind of like what you can do to, to mediate that and to counteract that and to give her what she really needs which brings us back to the three needs of the feminine is to, of course, give her attention all the time. And ladies, how often do you want attention from your man, from your woman AFT. all the time? Okay. Feeling that she's not understood. She needs presence. And so I know for me personally, like when Brendan and I are having a tough conversation, if I can tell that he is just listening to me just to gather enough data in order to turn the argument, in order to build an argument against whatever it is that I'm saying, 
I immediately know that he's not listening to me to understand me. He is listening to me for some other selfish reason, right? And then feeling unsafe and can't trust is all about getting reassurance. And I know that for me personally, Brennan, like I have never felt unsafe with you. I feel like I could tell you any deep, dark secret. Like there's nothing that I could tell you (laughs) that you haven't (laughs) that will make you like scared of me or that will make you feel like, Oh my God, she's crazy. I, I feel so unbelievably safe. I feel like I can trust you. And I think that's something that we've developed from the very, very beginning of our relationship. Absolutely. I, I feel, um, that, you know, with all of these, um, but I think we're going to get kind of into a discussion around, you know, the accelerators and the brakes later on in this podcast, but really thinking of the three needs of the masculine and feminine, they're really the accelerants in your relationship. If you're giving adoration, praise and sex, if you're giving presence, uh, having someone feel understood, having her feel safe, if you're giving these, they're going to accelerate the quality of your relationship. They're going to accelerate the appreciation. They're going to accelerate the the, the quality time that you're spending together. I, I just want to bring something up because I think that a lot of women don't understand this. And I think in our society, we look at men sometimes and we're like, oh, he's such a dog. All he wants is sex, blah, 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 blah. And we, we resent that. And so I wanted to ask you, Brennan, like, why is sex such an important need of the masculine? Like, why is this even on the list? Why is sex required in order for you to feel 100% fulfilled and 100% happy? in any relationship. Oh man, that's a fantastic question. I'm smiling ear to ear right now. I wish we were recording this because it's such an important question. I think at least my answer may surprise many of you. It comes from my deepest need to make you feel provided for. It comes from my desire to see the person that I care about happy. Like that sound, I I know that sounds like like BS. But the truth is, is that like being able to physically make you experience euphoria and bliss and ecstasy and heaven on earth in a intimate uh, proximity to me is like one of the greatest gifts. I I don't, that may not hold true for all men, but for me particularly, I get way more joy from watching you experience joy and fulfillment and pleasure and ecstasy than I could possibly get myself. As a matter of fact, we've even talked about men get the short end of the stick sometimes um, because uh, the female orgasm is such a magnificent force on this planet. Um, But the enjoyment that I get as a human being, but especially as a man of allowing the safety, it's it's a feeling of your partner out trusting you so much, loving you so much to, um, to allow you this vacuum for which you, um, are able to, I guess, provide to to her. It's a really, it's a great question. I'm having a hard time thinking about exactly how to say it, but, um, it's so important to me. This, I think what I say to you is it's your vulnerability and your openness with me is to allow me to allow you and to help facilitate this beautiful intimate interaction is like the greatest gift that anyone could give. Um, It's the most sacred. It's literally from the beginning of time. The way I perceive it is that it's almost like it's that act for you and why it's so needed for the masculine is like, this shows that my partner trusts me. Yes. Yes. And that my partner really honors me. Yes. And all of the things like um, Tony was even talking about, like, like even the act of, okay, a blowjob, for instance, for men, it's not just about the blowjob. It's about that connection between him and his partner, whether it's husband, wife, who, who cares, whatever, and just like the fact that they were where they're doing such a generous act for them just makes them feel so freaking loved. And a lot of people for them, that's so like backwards or they they just think about the act itself. And and we have to kind of um, reframe this to be more about just the sacredness of what the acts represent, like yes. what is beyond the acts. And, and it's not just about sex, you guys like we right. we know that. 
you know, we're talking about sex here today, but beyond that, it's the meaning behind sex. And I think that when you come from a place where you're focused on the meaning behind sex, you're going to have an awesome sex life. And we're going to talk about being a generous lover. What I, I'm curious, what does being a generous lover mean to you? Well, why don't we just talk about it? Well, so, yeah. so what <laughs> happens if, okay, so I, I, I already know a bunch of you are going to ask like, well, if I, if I do all these things for my husband and I give him admiration and I give him praise and I give him sex, but in return, he's not giving me anything like, what do I do then? And the thing is, you guys, is that, and I'll ask you, Brennan, what happens if the other person is not meeting your needs? Uh, if someone is not meeting your needs, um, they're going to meet their needs anyway. They're going to find a way to meet their needs. Um, you have to be a generous lover. I, I, that can mean so many different things. Um, but, but I think that being a generous lover means understanding what the other person wants. Catherine used a very, um, typical representation, um, you know, of a male female relationship. Um, but, In reality, it goes every direction. So I'm also always thinking like prioritizing what she wants, what she needs, her pleasure, what would turn her on, what would make her excited. That's just that's me attempting to be generous beyond anything I could need. It's the same as manifesting. We're letting go of the how the outcome. I, I don't it's not I'm not doing it for me, really. I'm really doing it because I want to see her lit up. And so for me, being a generous lover, the definition to me is like, it's releasing yourself. It is a trust and a belief and a faith that if I show up as the best version for my partner, romantically, emotionally, physically, sexually, all these pieces, if I show up as my best version to her, our life will be incredible. And I don't even think about what I'm getting now. And that's, I'm not perfect. We all have moments where we think about, well, Hey, these are thoughts though. And we've done so much work. I know Catherine's talked with you guys tons. Our thoughts aren't us. So it's really easy sometimes to be like, well, I washed the dishes and she didn't say shit. It's really easy to go there, but that's again, am I really being a generous lover or do I just know that Catherine loves the house being clean. She loves the environment feeling pristine that lights her up. And that's an accelerant for her in terms of how she feels. Then it's not about what I'm doing for you in order for me to get. Instead, it's simply saying, I'm going to be a generous lover and how I carry myself in my life. And I want to offer you the space that lights you up. Yeah, I would say like a quote that sticks out to me that we kept hearing over and over and over again at the event is that you come to relationships to give, not to get. Yes. And it's through that giving that you will eventually receive. Yes. And, and it works the same way in life. It works the same way in the universe. Like you don't just expect things to, you just don't, you just don't expect to receive unless you're first willing to give that thing. If you want more money in your life and you want to receive more money in your life, then give money give the energy of money, give others abundance. If you want to receive love in your life, then you must give love first. And it's, it's like, it's like putting your offering out there in order to receive from the other person or from, you know, the universe, but you're not coming from like, I'm just going to give to get, because I think that the best connection that you and I have on an intimate level is when I am coming into the bedroom from the perspective of I am so excited for the two of us to connect, for the two of us to have fun, and I really want to make you feel good. I really want I really want you to have a good time, and vice versa. Your thoughts are I want her to have a good time. We compete. It's literally we, a competition. It's we, like you have to release the competition because we want so much for the other person to have a great experience, to feel loved and supported, and to just I I want Catherine to have an experience that trumps mine. But the irony is when we both come with that, it it's a very unique situation. And if you're if you guys are lacking any spice. We have a theory that we learned at the relationship trip that was such a game changer for us because Brennan and I finally were able to recognize moments in our relationship where neither one of us were in the mood at different times and instances in our relationship when 
one of us were in a particular mood or when both of us were in a particular mood and how that coincided with certain things either happening or not happening. And what we learned at the event was that there's such thing as having breaks and accelerators to your sex life. And what that means is that certain things that happen or don't happen could either be putting a break on the fact that you're even horny to begin with, that you even have that desire to begin with, or there could be accelerators that it's like, when I do this, or when you do this, or when this is done, or when this doesn't happen, then I'm like ready to go, baby. Like this, these are accelerators. And the more accelerators that you have in your environment, in your energy, in your, um, in yourself, and the less breaks you have, then the better your sex life is going to be. So for instance, for me, some of my accelerators are, I really require the house to be clean. When I see a mess, my mind is focused on that mess and there's no freaking way. No chance. There's no, Brennan has no chance. If there, (laughs) if there's a pile of laundry by our bed, if our bed sheets look like shit, like forget it. And then I really, really enjoy smells, like great smells. I love incense. I love candles. I love essential oils. And so Brennan knows. I better to, shower. To, well, that <laughs> <laughs> basic stuff, but also to have essential oils going. Absolutely. And he doesn't just, and, and this is like a break for me personally, is when I see him setting up candles and setting up essential oils and all this stuff for the sake of like, oh, this is going to get Catherine in bed with me, it just doesn't work. That's a break. That's actually a break when I see it being done just for that reason. But when I see Brennan really trying and buying flowers and things that smell nice and things that look nice, I, at some point, it's like my bank account fills up with enough accelerators to where I'm like, okay, my libido is filled up. Let's go. I really like to be wooed. I really like to be courted. I really like uh, for Brennan to be very very nice to me and take care of me and do little things for me. And I also physically really, really love gentle, energetic touches. I hate being grabbed. I hate being smacked. Like I know that different people have different blueprints for how they like to be touched. For me, it's something called these like gentle, energetic touches. It's like, it's like, you're almost like, you're almost like touching my aura rather than actually touching my skin or touching my body. Like when you start doing that to me, it's game freaking over. If you start grabbing me at the wrong time, because I can also, you know, you know, different days, especially as us women, like we have cycles, right? So every day of the month is going to look different. And there are certain weeks where you're just like, don't freaking touch me at all. And that's definitely a considered a break. Like for instance, PMS or that time of the month for you, your menstrual cycle could be a break and that's fine. It's definitely a break for me. Like, I'm just like, Brennan, you have no chance. It is between this day and this day now. And so therefore, please don't touch me. I don't want to be touched. Let's just spend time together. Let's just, let's just, let's just spend quality time together. That's not in the bedroom. And, or, and then sometimes, you know, other times I do like to get grabbed and smacked and all that stuff. And by smacked, I don't mean like hit, I mean like, you know, smacked on the butt. And for me, then that is an accelerator, but it's almost like, and the thing is, you guys are probably asking, well, like, okay, first of all, first of all, in order for you to know what your break and accelerator is, you need to have experience. You need to become the observer of what has worked for you in the past and what hasn't and what's currently working for you in the past, uh, currently, and what isn't. And it's also, it can also, uh, a great way to learn this about yourself is through self-pleasure. Absolutely. And Brennan and I are big proponents of self-pleasure in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Totally. Like, and we'll talk about that a little bit later because I I just want to finish the break and accelerator because I also want to know yours just to show like, the different examples. And then I want to talk about like, what if, what if, you know, my break is your accelerator and your accelerator is my break. And then like, what do you do in that situation? So again, it's all about sitting down with your partner and openly having this conversation. Yeah, I, I want to dive in here. I was so hoping you got there and you nailed it on the head. Uh, you guys, there's two things here. You hear Catherine talking about, you know, like gentle touches and smacks. I'm like laughing over here because 
anything revolving like like a smack it was what she's talking about is like a two finger tap because she doesn't like anything like that and the good news is is that i'm not into that either we're actually a very similar kind of interests in terms of like our our actual blueprints yeah but Very compatible there's 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 a few pieces here i want to say the first is is that you need to be yourself in this world and what that means to me is you need to be honest with yourself but what the hell turns you on you and need it's to know not, your part stop changing yourself for yourself stop changing yourself for your partner stop changing yourself for everyone some people and we'll t- I'll talk I'm just gonna briefly mention them and then we'll tell you where you could find more about this because her name's Jaya and she's amazing. Um, she teaches about the energetic blueprint and it has really helped erotic us. Blueprint. Uh, erotic blueprint, excuse me. But um, there's all these different types. There's a sexual uh, blueprint. There's a sensual blueprint. Those two are very different. There's an energetic blueprint, very different. And kinky. There's a kinky blueprint, very different. And then there's also a shapeshifter, which can mean that you're into lots of them. But the, the important thing is, is that you're honest with yourself about what you are and not what you think you are or what you think you should be. Because yeah. that will always be a break for you, and not an accelerator. Guys, this comes from knowing yourself and knowing your parts. Okay, I know, I know a lot of women out there who don't know how their parts work. They don't even know what their parts look like. And I'm not afraid to say the word pussy. I call it a pussy. And I really love the work of Mama Gina. Mama Amazing Gina? Book. Gina. Gima? Gina. 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 Mama Gina. Yes. We'll, we'll link everything that we're talking about. We'll make sure to link in the show notes. So if we mention a name or a book or anything like that, you can always swipe up if you're listening on iTunes um, and go to the show notes and we'll just provide all that information for you. So she just talks about how so many women have so much shame around their body parts and how step one of really opening yourself up to this spicy sex life with another partner is to first open up the doors to having a spicy sex life with yourself. With yourself. You got to get to know your parts and you got to get to know how to pleasure yourself because if you don't know what you like, how the hell do you expect your partner to figure this out? Absolutely. And this is this uh, you're talking about pussy reclamation, right? Yeah, that's a great it's book. It's a fantastic book. And I can tell you, as a man, the first time Catherine brought it home and showed me, my eyes went wide because even men are, you know, we think that, you know, men oftentimes um uh, you know, use words with other men. It's this concept of like locker room talk that's such a scourge in our society. There's so many pieces to that I don't even want to get into. But, um, you know, we also have shame around those words. It's insane. It's Sometimes it's pitched as, as though, you know, men don't care, but women have shame around it. No, I think, you know, the fact that she brought that book home, my eyes bulged as indication that I wasn't even comfortable with her own ownership of herself. And so the reason we bring this up, this is an incredible book, but the reason we bring it up is because you have to, you have to learn about yourself. You have to take ownership of your pleasure um, in the same way you take ownership of your fulfillment of your business. You know, we're doing MBA right now. So the way that, you know, you're taking ownership of your relationships, your finances, your thoughts, your emotions, your thinking, all those different things Like this is ownership of sex. This is ownership of a piece of the fulfillment that you're seeking from business, from relationships, from all these different things. You have to take ownership and that takes courage, but it just starts by opening the book, any book, opening your journal, being honest with yourself about, you know, what do I know about myself? What don't I know? What have I transformed in myself to please other people or to please partners or that I thought that they would want? Yeah. And 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 do a reset. Just, you know, you're, you're running Windows 95. Go ahead and wipe Windows 95 and let's update it to a Mac with, you know, Leopard or something. I don't know. But it's time you're running an outdated programming. So it's time to just be honest with yourself. What do I know about myself? What do I know about my blueprint? Do I like soft, gentle touches? Do I like soft but firmer touches? Do I like it when someone touches my leg or my neck? Do I like, you know, kissing a certain way uh, or, or do I not, am I not as in, all these things matter. There's no shame around them. And and I think it's really important you just begin to recognize that. And go out there and learn whatever your partner is. And approach them as like 
someone who is just fascinated to learn more about them, like approach them as the investigator with no judgment, pure objectivity, as much objectivity as you can bring into this experience. I know that Brennan and I have literally, after the relationship trip, opened up our journals and be like, okay, Catherine, I'm going to make a checklist for you. Like, what is it that you like? What is it yes, that you don't yes. like? And then I did the same thing for him. And even if he says something where I'm like, oh, that's weird. You know, like there is no judgment. There can't, there be, can't you... be judgment because again, that breaks the cardinal rule of trust in a relationship. Safety. Exactly. That's safety. And right. again, especially if it's male doing it to female, if the female doesn't feel safe, then like, then you've already um, haven't met at least one of the needs, one of the three needs of the feminine. And so that already puts you in a worse off place than, than before. And you, she definitely will not want to have sex with you. Right. So Brennan, what are some of your accelerators and breaks? Oh, we had a laugh. We were talking about this before. Um, you know, Catherine is, uh, she is just a wild, wild spirit. She is a feminine goddess. She is a force as probably all of you know. So she shifts, you, you know, have you ever heard they say that like islands are feminine spirits because they are like bright and sunny and then storms come in. I heard Tony talk about Hawaii is like a feminine vortex. It's a feminine spirit. And, and, and because all the, everything's always changing. The weather it's like, is constantly it's, changing. It's raining, then it's sunny. There's enormous crashing waves and there's little ripples and it's just all this stuff, right? So Catherine has a lot of that energy in her. So one of the things that really is a break for me is being criticized. I have a really hard time going from being like, wow, you really like, why didn't you do that? How could you have not done that? And then like 20 minutes later, like the idea, a lot of people like talk about, you know, like makeup sex. Well, like in my blueprint, I don't feel like it. Yeah. Because if (laughs) there's no such thing as makeup sex in our, either of our blueprints, like I've never had, we've never had makeup sex. We've never had angry sex, like none of that. And that's not saying like there's a right way and a wrong way to it's do it. How you want to just... cope with how your own personal way of coping with conflict. That's just for us. It's a hundred percent of break. So like if he, if I'm criticizing him or he's criticizing me, like forget it. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, and that's just know, know thyself, right? Know thyself. You might find that it's actually in your relationship. It's a great way to um, de-stress high intensity situations. You know, maybe you're having a challenge or, you know, there's a, a, a big Maybe screaming and and when you get a moment, maybe it helps to have that like euphoric moment, but that's not for us to decide. It's not for anyone in the world to decide there's not right, wrong. It simply is what is serving me in my relationship? What is serving me in my sexuality? And guys, we haven't even touched on this yet. And I know we're getting there, but like you can probably hear from Catherine and I, we are not talking about this for the first time. Communication is one of my number one values and we talk about things and it is not all rosy and dandy all the time. No, and it can be very uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable. We are we are both unafraid to be put in the spotlight by our partner in the in the ways that we need. And sometimes that is extremely uncomfortable. And it's because the rewards of that are so great. It sucks in the moment, but like, what is the alternative, right? The alternative is for you to not have such a passionate relationship, for you to not understand your partner, not grow together and be roommates, right? Right. Versus vice versa, where if you are just honest with each other and transparent with each other and willing to share like what, what your boundaries are sexually, emotionally, physically, like what are your boundaries and being really open with one another, then the relationship is only going to strengthen and it's only going to grow. And, you know, we've addressed this, I think in one of the bonus modules for MBA, um, as well as I think we talked about it on another podcast much earlier on, but, um, you know, (sighs) communication is is so important and i can already see questions from from all of you guys coming in and and saying well what if my partner's really closed off what if he doesn't want to talk about it what what, 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 what you know i can't it's easy for you guys to talk it's you know lucky you you have such a supportive partner to talk about things yeah that's so easy to say but let me ask you this what is your role and what i mean by that is it always takes 
two people. It always, it's my belief in every situation, it always takes two. And I understand that that can be controversial, but I believe it. So my question is, what is your role that is not creating a safe environment for someone to share? Man, woman, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, it, LGBTQ, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, what age you are, um, how long you've been together, how short you've been together, whether you're dating in a casual way on one of the dating platforms. What is your role? Because we teach self-accountability and ownership. So what is your role in the relationship that is not allowing what you want the relationship to look like? And that can be very uncomfortable. And sometimes the decision to that is, well, I don't feel like this is working because I really have tried everything. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that's not true. Maybe you really have tried everything, but I want you to understand the truth isn't that you tried everything. The truth is that you tried enough to where you realized it wasn't worth it because we've never tried everything. But when we try enough and we realize that we're not getting the result, we recognize at some point that we need to make a different decision. We need to make an adjustment. So I just want to bring that up because a lot of you will say, well, I can't communicate with my partner like that. He's closed off. She's closed off. We don't talk about stuff like that. And it could also, and if you're really being honest with yourself, go back to the three masculine and the three feminine needs. Is there something that you're not doing there? Because I see those as the core in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And anytime I feel like something's off, I ask myself, okay, have I praised him today? Have I adored him or admired him today? And have I given him, if not sex, at least met his love language of physical touch? Have I given him a kiss? Have I given him a hug? Have I just rested my hand on his knee or anything like that, that I know that's going to fulfill his need for intimacy? Because that sex part, guys, doesn't just mean intercourse. It could mean anything on a physical level that categorizes as being intimate or as being sexual. So if I haven't done those things, then perhaps I can start there. And I know if something's wrong beyond that, then we have a deeper issue and we can dive into that deeper issue and vice versa, you know, for Brenton, and I'm not going to speak for you, but I'm assuming that when you go back to those three cores of the three feminine needs, it's like a game changer. All of a sudden I'm like alive again and we can move on from there. Totally. And I, she, Catherine brought up something so important. Um, you know, these aren't our framework. This is something that Alison Armstrong developed that Tony Robbins taught us and Alison. But, you know, they use sex. Uh, Tony uses a lot of language as part of NLP. Um, it, it, he uses language that catches your attention. But I've told Catherine this a million times. My need of a masculine actually isn't just sex. It's actually intimacy matters way more than the physical act. Intimacy to me can mean so many things. And it's the effort at intimacy that matters literally more than everything. So what that can mean is this. Does that mean that, you know, intimacy could be like, you know, she puts her hand around my neck and like she knows that I love touching on like my neck when my hair is short. That can be that that is that is connection. That to me is the same as sex. That sounds interesting, but in my blueprint, just that connection, that like adoration in a physical manifestation, to me is what fulfills that need for sex. It's not. I think you know men get a bad rap that they want it all always all the time. I think at least for me, and I can only speak for myself, I can't speak for your partners or your relationships. But in my experience, I need intimacy all the time. But the physical manifestation of intimacy has many, many different, different channels, different pathways. So touching my neck, or just giving me a really soft kiss on the forehead or holding my hand like surprising me, not like when I reach to hold your hand, <laughs> but like when you come and find me or you come and hug me laying in bed really close or like it's all of these like touch, all this touch, this proximity, this physical proximity is what that word sex actually means. Now, that's in my experience. In your experience, you're going to have to have communication with your partner to understand what the three needs of the masculine 
what they manifest physically for him because they will look different than me. Yeah. And I wanted to also um, talk about with you, babe, or actually talk about with, with the listeners is that um, the concept of like desire. And I know that I'm being like super freaking transparent right now, but I know for me, like personally, we've struggled in our relationship at many different times with desire and how some of the things that I've learned about myself over the last few years has really gotten us to this place where I think that, I think that our sex life has never been better at this point. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's like at its I don't even want to say prime because I don't want to limit it. I don't want to be like, it can't get better because why not it get better? Why not? Right. Why not have it all? Um, But it's just been incredible. And for me, my struggles have really come from, for instance, when I had my breast implants in my, my chest, in my body, that was really severely limiting my libido. I almost had a non-existent libido for the last part of my breast implant illness, like really when the illness came about, it just like was not working for me. I know for me, my hormonal birth control that I was on actually prior to my relationship with Brennan was such a libido killer for me. I know that heavy metal toxicity could be a libido killer, a desire killer. I know that for me also my IUD, my um, non-hormonal IUD was creating imbalance, a pH imbalance, and also putting heavy metals into my body that was drastically reducing my libido. So I, I have used all kinds of vitamins and supplements and herbs, and there's a lot of practices that I do myself, like for instance, self-pleasuring or taking certain herbs or whatever. And you guys can Google what herbs that women can take in order to increase their libido. You can do all those things, but if there's something behind it, that's really just dampering your, putting a damper on the, on your libido and on your desire to really look into that and to remove those things so that they're no longer in your way. And then also on top of that, what's really helped me beyond just removing those things, because that improved our sex life a ton. But beyond that, it was just really like, this was a game changer for us was what is my accelerator and what is my break? Yeah, this is the, this is the one. I I would say that the two most, there's three things. There's three pillars. The first is communication. I've talked about it. Catherine's talked about it. You know it. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Communication is vital. And finding a way to communicate that works for you and your partner is the most important thing in your relationship, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all of it. Then obviously the needs of the masculine and feminine have really helped. But I would say in the physical manifestation of of intimacy, understanding Catherine's accelerants, understanding her breaks, And then having her understand my accelerants and my breaks, it gives us a formula. And I don't mean a formula to sex. I mean a formula to intimacy. Do you see the difference, guys? It's not this plus this equals sex. It's if we do these things, it will lead us in proximity in an environment that would welcome a multitude of interactions, no matter what they are. And it's those decisions that matter because... It could be that we just kiss once and go to bed, but we both feel fulfilled intimately. Yeah. Or it could end up in a number of different variants. But do you see what I mean? It's making the decisions to have accelerants. Sometimes we both are building our accelerants and then Catherine, you know, is like, oh, I'm tired. And it's like, I know, because I'm already (laughs) tuned into the fact that she's tired. (laughs) But the fact that we had that intimate moment was all that we needed. Yeah, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about more practical like tips that have also really helped us. Number one, and we've mentioned this a couple times already, like self pleasure is key. And Brennan and I have been very open in our relationship to welcome and to invite uh, sex lives outside of our relationship. And what I mean by that is not literally outside of our relationship, but like outside of our own connection with each other. I have no problem whatsoever. And I know so, that some women and some uh, some women get threatened by their partners self-pleasuring themselves. You know, like, God forbid he turned the porn on. Like, God forbid that he masturbated and I didn't know about it or I'm involved, uninvolved and that means he lost interest in me. And it doesn't mean any of those things. Yeah. It just means that he's fulfilling his own goddamn needs. And guess what, guys? Relationships are not just about the other person meeting your needs. It's also about you meeting your needs, okay? And inviting in that generous lover 
to come through in the other person by you being a generous lover and by you understanding that if you fulfill your own needs and you're a generous lover, like that's just whatever they do on top of that is just a bonus. And vice versa, Brennan is also very encouraging and very open around my self-pleasuring. And me and him have gone to sex shops together and I have tons of toys and he gets so excited. If he ever sees like a toy in my vicinity because he knows I like recently used it. I mean, this man smiles from ear to ear. It is not about him feeling threatened or him feeling I'm just like, I'm dissatisfied by him or like, you know, like men will sometimes be like, oh, she's not, she's not interested. I'm not big enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. And really has nothing to do that, do with that. You guys, I believe as human beings, we should have that relationship with ourselves and it's totally okay. Even if you already have a spicy relationship within the relationship. And if you don't have a spicy relationship and you're developing that, at least in the process, you're still meeting your needs and you are still learning about yourself so that then you can translate all of that data, all of that information to your partner. And conversely, if you know, at any point, and this is okay, we're going to release some shame right here. If at any point you've thought, man, I wish my partner was just better. Pause. How much time have you spent learning about yourself? Do you think that if you were a better, if you were a better instructor for yourself and understanding Mm, your body, that you could then teach your partner how to be even better? Yeah. That takes courage. It takes saying, screw you, ego. Get the hell out of here. I will say lowering the ego down when you're having sex and literally not being afraid to tell the other person what they like and what they don't like. And like, you're doing too much of this. Can you please stop that? Can you do more of this? Ooh, I really like that. Like and being I, as, being as vocal as possible with each other, like as, as much as that sounds so uncomfortable in the very beginning, depending on where your relationship currently is and kind of the level of comfort that you guys have with each other on, on this topic, like just opening it up. Maybe it's not while you're having sex. Maybe it's before or after you just kind of summarize like, Hey babe, I just want to let you know, this kind of hurt me a little bit or like that didn't feel too good. Or, Ooh, when you did that, Oh my God, that felt amazing. And then the next time, guess what? Guess what? He or she are going to be like, uh, fuck yeah, I'm doing more of that again because I want them to be happy. Right. And vice versa. And when you have a strong ego, you immediately connect your self-worth with the other person's pleasure. And that's a huge mistake because if you feel like if you didn't perform well enough, then you're not good enough. Then that is just going to not only make you suffer, but the other person suffer too, because then they don't feel like they're safe enough to communicate with the other person about what their needs are. And it's so important that you don't just simply say what doesn't feel good. You need to yourself find what feels good because if the masculine finds out that you didn't like something, but isn't provided a solution to make you feel happy, all of a sudden he's criticized, feeling closed off. These are what shut down the masculine instead of admiration and praise. So instead it's, wow, you know, I did this thing. It felt so good. Can you, can, can I show you how to do it? Yeah. It's as simple as that. I did this thing. It felt so good. Can I show you how to do it? Can I just share something that like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to share this, Brennan, but like Brennan and I have literally watched each other's self-pleasure so that we can learn what he does to himself and what I do to myself that feels good. And I know this is like way beyond like to the next level, but that's just to show you guys like we didn't start that way. Like no. we, we, we have grown into who we are today and what our sex life looks like today. But like, that is such a game changer to just even see like what he does to himself that I could also do and add on to and add my flair to it. Like it's, it's been such a game changer. Absolutely. Um, some other tips is, um, you know, Brennan walks around naked a lot and I am not like the biggest fan of walking around naked. I like my sweatpants. I like being in clothes. I like, I like the feeling of clothes on my body. However, something that's really helped us is that at bedtime, sleeping naked, whether it leads to sex or not, is such an accelerator for both parties because when your body is naked within the vicinity of your partner, your loved one, your husband, your wife, 
you are just by like the proximity itself, you are way more likely to develop the desire to to develop that electrical chemistry between each other that is like happening on a biochemical level, just by like your brain knowing that there's a naked person next to you in bed, just whether or not that leads to sex or not. I'm not saying that every night, just because we sleep naked, we have sex every night. We don't. And that's something else I wanted to quickly mention is like, Part of your data collection from each other is a question Brennan and I asked each other is how often do you need sex in order to be the most happiest and fulfilled version of yourself? And that change, that answer changes all the freaking time. It changes. And it's also not the same number for both of us. Right. And so that's another interesting conversation. And just like for him to know, like he's not, he's not going to get that many days a week so that then he can be like, okay, that's fine. At least I'm comfortable self-pleasuring myself so that I do f- feel fulfilled. Even if you're not ready to commit to that many times per week and support it, not just fulfilled, but also support it. It's a, yeah. it's a, conversation it's a uh, it's a really generous um gift to be able to have conversations with your partner and to really support their needs yeah and then another thing that's really helped us is keeping and this is like hard to do especially in this day and age and i'm sure quarantine is making this a little harder because it's like well, like at night you're just kind of like okay like let's watch some netflix let's watch some movies like let's entertain ourselves babe i have some work i need to get done before bed i forgot to do something blah 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 and we're so guilty of this and and we're not perfect at this however we have found that this helps so if you're willing to be very disciplined with this this could make a huge difference which is to keep electronics and that includes like your kindle your laptop your phone as well as the tv out of the bedroom and right now we do have a tv in our bedroom but when we end up refurnishing our place and kind of rearranging things and buying new furniture that we planned on doing before this whole thing happened. And now, you know, we're kind of stuck at home. No, there's no way we're going to do anything with our furniture. I don't need a Corona couch for a few months. Yeah, we don't, we don't need that right now. So, but our plan is to actually take the TV out of the bedroom because we just know that these distractions are keeping people from really connecting quality time. Yeah. It's all about quality time. And if you just, even the last hour before you go to bed, um, no electronics, put your phone on the charger, put it on airplane mode, whatever you got to do and just talk with each other and just like giggle and wrestle and like do stupid shit. Like Brennan and I have pillow fights all the time. It's actually ridiculous how often we have pillow fights and how we start wrestling last night. Yeah. Like last night we, (laughs) we had a pillow fight. We started wrestling each other. Like we just do these silly things And because we are doing them, you know, without any distractions, not only are we getting our needs met for quality time and having our love languages met, but also we are, we are connecting in a way that is more likely to lead to some sort of, um, pleasuring act, AKA sex and, or intimacy. Yeah. Which is, which is, which is, which I mean, how do you see intimacy? Because he keeps I, saying that. Because I see sex within intimacy. I think. I think that. I'm, and maybe I'm just projecting onto the feminine, which I, which I apologize for. I, sex to me can be misconstrued as such a physical, explicit example of connection. So when I say intimacy, what I mean is that quality time is leading to physical proximity. Mm-hmm. And and releasing expectations of that outcome. So you see intimacy as a connection. I see sex as just a subcategory of what could be inside of intimacy. Yes, that's what I. Okay, we're okay. agreeing on the exact okay, same so, thing. And this is so funny, guys. All the time, we Brenda and I start like going at each other a little bit, like questioning, like, "What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean?" And then we find out that we're saying the exact same thing in a different way. And every yeah. time, like ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time in our arguments, we realize that the whole time we've been saying the same thing, just in. Different different ways. And that's just to show you guys masculine and feminine energy. It's, it's, it acts differently, but it could mean the exact same thing. Um, okay. So another thing I wanted to talk about was orgasmic manifestation. What? And yes, you guys, you can use orgasms or sex in general to become better manifestors. What? This is something, shut up. This is something that I learned um, personally about two years ago that has been such a game changer for me in terms of like my manifesting abilities. It's really sped up ever since I mastered this. And this is something that I actually taught Brennan. And now this is something that we do together. Now, I don't know if this is something that you also do by yourself. 
Do you remember to orgasmic manifest? No, I don't. But now uh, I'm getting a very public reminder on yes. a podcast a million. Never so. waste an orgasm, guys. So how basically what orgasmic manifestation is, is like the premise that via a sacred sexual act, such as orgasming or self-pleasuring or, or being pleasured in a relationship or having sex or whatever, that essentially sex orgasm and pleasure is all about creation. And if you think about it, like technically speaking, what are you having sex for? Eventually it's to make a baby, right? The, the very act of it, the very act of releasing sperm and releasing an egg, like it's all about creation and how sex is the very thing that creates us. And so if it can create us, if it can create a soul, if it can create a human being, then it can also create any other desire in your life. Manifestation is essentially an act about creation and orgasmic manifestation is basically an orgasmic act of creation. And it really goes hand in hand with sex. And you can use your orgasm, literally, you guys, and to draw into your life what you want most by knowing when to time that manifestation into sex, whether you're having sex by yourself or you're having sex together. It really comes down to sending that creative energy. It's like directing the energy of the orgasm to a mental image of your deepest desires. And this also really helped me see sex as a spiritual act where it's not just me fulfilling my physical needs as a human being, but this is actually something that my soul is enjoying too, which is so cool to think about. Like when you think about it on a spiritual level, it's either one soul doing it or two souls, or I don't know, whatever you're into, three souls, four souls, whatever. Like it's these souls coming together to create something. And it doesn't always have to be a baby, you guys. You can create whatever it is that you want. That is your power as a creator. And one of the avenues for that is through orgasmic manifestation. And personally for me, and I know that Brennan and I, when we practice this together, it's it's kind of fun. Like before, before we begin, we're like, okay, the next time we have sex, Brennan, and it leads to an orgasm. Don't forget, Brennan. Don't, don't forget, forget. This is what man, we're manifesting. And so <laughs> we literally use this for our RA, we use this for our condo, we use this for healing anytime like... I need some sort of healing. He needs some sort of healing. I use my orgasmic energy or he uses his orgasmic energy to really infuse one another with that, with that vibration. Cause it really is just a vibration. And this is a, an amazing technique that I actually expand so much deeper in on. Like if you guys are curious about this or interested in it and you're like, what, what is this? I've never heard of it. Or maybe you've heard of it and you're really curious to know more. I actually have like, this is part of a whole module that I have inside of Manifestation Babe Academy, which if you guys didn't get the memo, is actually open for enrollment right now. Um, I believe it's until April actually, 1st. April 1st. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. I always have my business partner here to remind me of my dates. So April 1st at 1159 PM is when the doors close for the special round of the Manifestation Babe Academy, which if you haven't heard in the previous episode, I'm actually doing, especially at this time that this interesting time that we are going through right now as a collective, um, my team and I decided to create a 12 month interest free installment plan to make this as accessible to as many souls as possible. So whether it is a topic like orgasmic manifestation that interests you or in general, just knowing and learning how to become the manifester and creator of your life, because that is your divine birthright. And that is your duty and your obligation as a soul here in human form to use this physical game to create whatever it is that you have come here to create. And if you don't know what you came here to create just tune into your heart and just tune into what you're what you most love what you're most passionate about what interests you the most um do you have any yeah i was just gonna say you know i mean i I, catherine goes into like such great detail as an in manifestation of academy oh and we have a a joined module inside of mba which is called how to get your partner on board with manifestation which i know that there's a lot of people who enter this world of the law of attraction and manifestation and basically they they they're into it but their partner isn't into it and they're concerned that their partner is preventing them you know like some people, they just got to blame someone, right? And so they start blaming their partner 
thinking that their partner is responsible for their lack of results. And in this module, we talk about how that's not necessarily true and how you can inspire and get your partner on board with manifestation, whether or not they are resistant or accepting of it. No matter what their opinion of it is, we teach you exactly how both of you can develop that relationship where you guys are both co-creating your life together. And again, that spills over into orgasmic manifestation where you can actually give your partner a fun activity to practice manifesting in a way that they really have fun with or appreciate. Catherine said something brilliant last night. She said... um... Uh, we were talking about this exact instance and getting someone on board. And, and she, and she said the, the, the difference is you have to compel, not tell. And if you can compel someone to do something, you'll be successful. But if you tell them it'll never happen. And, you know, if some of you are out there listening right now and wondering, oh, okay, this is interesting. This has been an interesting talk and learn maybe a little bit about Brennan and Catherine, maybe a little more than I want to know, but, um, you know, but like, is this real? Like, like, is there like, this can't really be real. You know, there's science behind it. If you really look at it, I mean, you know, have you ever gotten a, a car, gotten a new car, gotten a used car? And all of a sudden you see it everywhere. You see it everywhere, right? It, I, I can, I can't tell you how many times in my life I got an Acura TL and all of a sudden I saw every Acura TL in California, basically. Um, that's exactly the part of your brain. It's called the reticular activating system. It's picking up on the connections that you're making emotionally. And it's highlighting those because there's no more accurate TLs in the road. There's just more awareness of them. So the exact same way that that works in a scientific sense in your brain, in your RAS, your reticular activating system, is the same way it works with the vision board. You're connecting neurons to the things that you want. It's the same way it works in orgasmic manifestation. If you're focusing energy on what you want, guess what? It will probably have a tendency to peek its little face much more frequently or much more quickly than other things because you've tied mass amounts of energy and emotion to that outcome. Beautiful. If you guys are ready to enroll inside of the Manifestation Babe Academy, you can go to manifestationbabeacademy.com before the doors close on April 1st. Brennan, do you have any last final words on this amazing topic that we've been talking about today? Oh man, um, I I just want to thank all of the listeners, all of you guys for holding space. Um, I think that Catherine and I operate with a lot of radical transparency and and, and radical courage in our relationship and our life. But um, thank you for holding space and allowing us to share all of this with you. Um, and I hope that it was uh, helpful to you guys. So thanks for bringing me on, babe. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe. And we will catch you or I will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.